Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing my best to try to break down the main differences between the Canon R6 and the Canon R7 in terms of using these cameras as wildlife and macro cameras, as well as touching on their video capabilities. Now let's start with my favorite part of this, the macro photography. Now this is where I feel the Canon R7 really excels up and above the Canon R6. Now, I primarily shoot macro with a flash, so that mitigates any type of issues of using an APS-C sensor where you don't have as high of ISO performance, which isn't a problem since I'm using flash and usually shooting at very, very low ISOs. The Canon R7 also has a 32 megapixel sensor versus the 20 megapixel sensor that comes on my Canon R6. Now, that is a massively big difference in terms of how much cropping you can get away with. And I find that to be a really, really big advantage to the Canon R7 when you're shooting macro photography. The other thing about an APS-C sensor is they have naturally deeper depths of field, which again is a huge advantage when shooting macro because we're already shooting very, very close to our subject, being forced to very, very shallow depths of field. So having that naturally deeper depth of field coming from the APS-C sensor is an advantage over my full frame Canon R6. The Canon R7 has internal focus stacking, which the Canon R6 also has, but the big advantage to the Canon R7 is that you're able to get a composite finished JPEG image from all of those RAWs. The Canon R6 will focus stack and just give you those RAWs, and you'll have to do the rest of the work on your own in post, where the Canon R7 will actually make that composite JPEG for you right then and there, and you have a finished image. Now, I was actually shooting a product shoot for a local dentist, and I ended up using my Canon R7 over my Canon R6 because it just made that much less work for me. So there's an example where the Canon R7 actually excelled over my full frame R6 in a professional setting. For all of these reasons, my Canon R7 is now my go-to camera body for macro photography. My Canon R6 still holds some distinct advantages over my Canon R7, but when it comes to specifically macro photography, there's really not a lot of reasons for myself to use the Canon R6 over the Canon R7. So for macro photography specifically, I actually exclusively use my Canon R7 now. Now, because I spend so much time out in the woods hiking around, I always have the Canon R6 and Canon R7 attached to a 100 to 400 telephoto lens, and I have a lot of experience with wildlife photography with both of these bodies. Now, I've taken loads of images with both of these camera bodies, and it's undeniable how much of an advantage the 1.6 crop factor that you get from an APS-C sensor like the Canon R7 really is. Having that extra reach can be all the difference. Now mixed with the high megapixel sensor, which also gives you extra reach in terms of cropability, makes it so that this is really a very advantageous setup when it comes to wildlife over a full frame system. Now, although Canon has made decent strides when it comes to high ISO performance with their APS-C sensors, I still feel that it's lacking a little bit in high ISO performance. I find the breaking point to be around ISO 6400. This is gonna be a preferential thing. Some people are going to say, hey, I can shoot and pull off images with ISO 12800 and have those images usable. And that's something that I wanted to bring up is on social media, it can be very easy to deceive people when it comes to making claims like that. We have AI software now that's very, very good at scrubbing noise out of images, and people can pull off shots at ISO 12800 or crazy high ISOs like that and have it scrub the noise and look okay. But when I say it looks okay, it looks okay on social media. It looks okay on a small screen. But what I notice is when I see people making those claims, a lot of times I'll look at those images and if you actually examine those images or zoom in a little bit, people push those softwares too far and a lot of times those images kind of look like watercolors. In my personal opinion, if you push the Canon R7 above ISO 6400, you're going to need to use such heavy noise reduction that you're going to be losing a significant amount of detail in your images. And for that reason, like I said, it's very easy to be deceived on social media by some of these claims that you can shoot at these crazy high ISOs. To some degree, this is a preference thing to what some people consider usable and some people don't. But like I said, 
in my honest opinion, anything above ISO 6400, you're going to see significant loss in detail because of the amount of noise reduction you'll be needing to use. Now, when I'm in a good light scenario, which nine times out of 10 I am when I'm outside shooting wildlife, the Canon R7 is my first choice in the camera body that I would use for wildlife, even over my Canon R6. Now notice that I say in good light, you need decent lighting to get really, really professional images coming out of the Canon R7. It's still an APS-C sensor. It's still going to struggle in low light environments. We know that it's to be expected, but in a decent light scenario, this camera can pull off absolutely beautiful images. Again, having all of the advantages like the autofocus and the tracking that comes with these camera bodies now, as well as the really good stabilization and the IBIS inside of this body is really, really a huge advantage when it comes to wildlife. And having that 32 megapixel sensor is just the icing on the cake. Now in normal wildlife scenarios where I have good lighting, the Canon R7 is always going to be my first choice for wildlife photography. It has a high megapixel sensor, a really high burst rate, and it has that extra 1.6 crop factor that's gonna give me more reach from my lenses. For that reason, it's going to excel nine times out of 10 in good light conditions over my Canon R6. Now, all of that being said, I would never give up my Canon R6, even as specifically a wildlife camera, over my Canon R7. The Canon R6 has better autofocus than the Canon R7 does. Now, I've seen some people claim the opposite, but I've spoken with multiple people that own Canon R7s and Canon R6s, R5s, R3s, and all of those people that I've spoken with have claimed the same thing that I've experienced, and that's that the Canon R7 autofocus is not quite on par with its full frame counterparts. It's not quite as accurate. It just seems to not stay on its target for as long. It seems to like to jump around a little more, where I noticed the R6 focus will just grab and hold right onto its subject. Now, that's been my experience that the R6 autofocus is, is just plain out superior to the R7. Now, I'm not saying the R7 autofocus is bad, and there are some options in the R7 autofocus that I wish were in the Canon R6 autofocus. So there are some software advantages to the R7 autofocus, but in terms of accuracy and tracking, the R6 autofocus has been superior to the R7 autofocus in my experience. Another area where the Canon R7 lags behind the R6 is the buffer. The buffer is very meager on the Canon R7. I feel like I chew right through it instantly. And it's happened to me quite a few times. A lot of times I'm shooting action and then I run out of the buffer and it just halts to almost nothing at that point. And then I'm missing action shots. It's happened to me before, it'll happen to me again. So it's an unfortunate reality, but a reality nonetheless. Now this was never a problem with my Canon R6. I always felt like the Canon R6 buffer allowed me to shoot basically unlimitedly, where the Canon R7 buffer, I can hit the wall instantly. And unfortunately we have that really cool pre-capture feature that's built into the Canon R7 where it'll allow us a half second of shooting before we actually take shots. But because of that meager buffer that we already are dealing with, I choose not to use that feature because of it. And because of that, I find the pre-capture feature to be kind of a gimmick rather than a useful thing, which was kind of a disappointment for me for the Canon R7. Now, all of these things considered, I still tend to choose my Canon R7 nine out of 10 times over my Canon R6 for wildlife photography. And that's for one main reason, the crop factor. The extra reach cannot be understated. It's a massive advantage when it comes to wildlife. It makes it so that the Canon R7 can capture images that the Canon R6 just cannot. Now that being said, if I had unlimited funds and I could afford premium extra reach telephoto lenses, I would definitely say going full frame would yield you the superior results in terms of wildlife. The Canon R6 has better autofocus, dynamic range, raw flexibility, ISO performance, and overall, if you were an outright professional, I would say going full frame for wildlife would be hands down the best decision that you could do. Now again, you would have to have unlimited funds because those telephoto lenses mixed with the full frame camera bodies, you're going into the thousands and thousands of dollars. Now for the rest of us, the Canon R7 is more than what we need for wildlife photography. I love having the Canon R7. I love that Canon has this in their lineup now so that you can get a cheaper wildlife body that's going to really check all the boxes for the masses. And I think for most people that are hobbyist wildlife photographers, the Canon R7 is going to make more sense than a full frame camera. Now, like I said, 
ultimately, if you're a professional or you want the absolute best quality images that you can get, you really should go full frame. But it's going to be thousands and thousands of more dollars than if you go with a Canon R7. You can go with a shorter telephoto lens and have that 1.6 crop factor, as well as having that higher megapixel sensor, which again, all of these things are really huge advantages when it comes to wildlife. I still think a full frame camera like my Canon R6 with an appropriate telephoto lens for the job is going to yield you better results. But like I said, for the normal man like me who doesn't have unlimited funds, I think the Canon R7 really makes a lot of sense. I love having both the Canon R6 and the Canon R7 to be completely honest with you guys. I think one complements the other very, very well. So having both the Canon R6 and the Canon R7, if that's an option for you, is a really huge advantage. Like I said, one is really good at low light, one is really good at getting you more reach, higher megapixels. They really kind of prop each other up. So for that reason, I really, really like having both of these camera bodies. The Canon R7 is a very, very powerful camera that's going to make most people very, very happy when it comes to wildlife photography. Okay, let's talk about video. Now, this is a spot where I've been really impressed with the Canon R7. The 4K C-Log3 footage matches up really, really well with my Canon R6. I was actually out on a professional job shooting for a friend of mine that owns a massage parlor, and I was shooting some video. I had my B-roll shooter using the Canon R7. I actually used a few scenes from it, and although the footage is a little bit noisier than my Canon R6, like to be expected, it's totally usable, it matches up very, very well, and I actually love the Canon R7 footage. The 4K C-Log3 footage is very, very nice. Now, we all know the Canon R6 likes to overheat, and that's one nice thing about the Canon R7 is it does not overheat nearly as quickly. So when the Canon R6 does overheat and it needs a little break, it's nice to have another camera that can shoot 4K C-Log3 footage, and I can just keep going, and it kind of props up my Canon R6 in that respect. The Canon R7 comes with a 4K fine setting. Now, this is limited to 4K 24 P, but it looks really good, guys, and significantly sharper than my Canon R6 footage. So I love using the Canon R7 for 24p video. I've been really loving the footage that I get from the Canon R7. It has even really impressed me in high ISO scenarios. I've been very, very impressed with the Canon R7, and actually one of the reasons that I love having the camera is for video. I do a lot of video work and it matches very, very well with the Canon R6 footage. Okay guys, I hope that this video answered some of the questions that you might have had about the Canon R7 or R6. If there's anything that I missed, go below, drop a comment, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. I've also got my website that I've been putting a lot of work into, so make sure you check that out, and I'll see you on my next video.